Howdy folks and welcome to the Swim Stim Challenge. Now I'm on the banks of Larford Lakes today, not necessarily my venue choice, although it's a fantastic venue. I had a message a couple of weeks ago from the guys at Dynamite HQ, meet at Larford Lakes, nine o'clock, and as always, I was bang on time, raring to go. So, the Swim Stim Challenge is all about the guys at Dynamite setting the anglers a challenge to catch maybe a big fish, a big net of fish, different species of fish, you know, a few wacky, challenge, a few wacky challenges thrown in. And my challenge came through about 10 minutes ago on my phone. I've been told by cameraman Mark not to look at my phone, so it's going to be a little bit of a surprise for me as well as you guys. So if I just open my message, here we are. And my challenge is to catch a £10 plus carp, which we're on the specimen late today, so hopefully we've got a really good chance. You can use, this is where it gets a little bit, of a challenge, you can use only two products from the bucket in front of you. Plus, you're allowed one bag of fishery pellets, but that will cost you an extra five pound. So, that means if I want to use a bag of pellets, I've got to catch a 15 pounder. Right, okay. So, nothing more, than, nothing more I like than catching massive fish. Let's have a look at what we're up against. So, all ground baits by the looks of it. Obviously it's fishery pellets here, so obviously all ground baits is feed, which is good because I'm planning to, oh, some pellet soaks, which is good because I'm planning to use a little method feeder. I've been catching quite a few fish on a little method feeder here recently. So, little method feeder, I can whack some ground bait around it, and I think I will end up using the method mix. Beautiful ground bait, just a little bit more feed content than the other, the other swim stims there. So obviously for warm water, that's gonna work really well. And hook bait wise, I've been left a little bit limited to durables. And we've got some little durables in different, different colors. And I think I'm gonna go for the krill. And in between obviously catching a few carp, hopefully a few carp. I wouldn't mind catching a few skimmers. If we could put a nice net of skimmers together, that'd be great. So I'm going for the six mil. Just um, slightly smaller than the eight mil, obviously. Smell beautiful. And they are going to be my hook bait. So I've got my feed there, whack that around a method feeder, and my hook bait. Obviously the first job is to mix the bait up. Obviously when you're using ground bait, pellets, anything that needs soaking up, you need to get it. Get the water in there, get it soaking as soon as possible. You can see, obviously, for this method mix, there's some slightly bigger particles in there. They'll all still go through a riddle once it's mixed up, but just a little bit more, a little bit more food there to hold some bigger fish. So, takes a little bit more water than the other swim stims. And all I want to do is just give it a touch of water to start with. And then give it a quick whiz up. And I'm looking just to really create a really heavy mix. I want, I want to use a method feeder today, so everything needs to be nice and heavy. You smell it, really, quite a meaty mix this is. And you can see, obviously it's, it's a bit of a mess at the minute, but I reckon in 10, 15, 20 minutes time, when I come back, I'll quickly whiz that up again, maybe add a tiny, tiny bit more water, whack it through the riddle and you'll see it'll be the perfect mix for fishing a little method feeder. So by the magic of editing, we're now 10 minutes on. The ground bait's dried out slightly, still got a bit of a, a tacky feel to it, but as I run my hands through there, you can just feel it's dried out, just a touch. All we're gonna do, whack it onto a riddle. A fine ground bait's really important for any style of fishing, really. You just want everything to break down nice and consistently in the water. So, Fine ground bait, whether you're balling in or method feeder fishing is really important. What you've left is obviously a few extra lumps that have took on a bit extra water, so I'll just push those through. Now if you're feeling flush, you've got plenty of money in your pockets, you could probably chuck those away, but I'm a little bit financially embarrassed, so I always push those through to save, save that extra little bit of ground bait. And you can see now, I've got a beautiful, fine mix that's going to break down nice and consistently. Reveal my hook bait exactly where I want it to and when I want it to. No lumps 
and I think that is ideal for method feeder work. Beautiful mix that is. So, really standard feeder gear for me today. I've got my 11 foot feeder rod out. This is a free spirit carp feeder. Perfect setup really for chucking anywhere from five meters up to sort of 70, 80 meters really with a method feeder. So ideal. Match that rod with a nice big reel. This is a castism. There's two features I like about this reel and they've both got their own little plus points for today's session. One, if I need to chuck a long distance, obviously the big spool is fantastic. The line peels off it effortlessly and you can chuck a long way with a big reel. Secondly, it's got a quick drag on it, which means that when I'm fishing short, hopefully I'll be underarming a method feeder later on, catching some really big fish. When I'm fishing short, I can quickly switch that drag around and all of a sudden I'm, I'm fishing with a free spool really, which obviously for those big fish, when they go on that first powerful run, is gonna really help and I can just quickly click, click it around and start playing my fish again. Main line on the reel is five pound. I've got a shot leader on um, of 12 pound. That's midi M tech line really nice robust sinking line. The shot lead is there for one, if I do need to cast, and two, for playing those big fish under my feet. Talk about the end tackle now. Method feeder, you know, a really standard setup with a little bit of a twist. I've using the Preston method feeders today, the, the ICS system. I like the little method feeders that Preston do now. And I've actually whacked a guru stem through the middle of the Preston feeder. This is, Bit of a loose fit to start with, but you have to just squeeze the method, fit, squeeze the method feeder in a little bit and you get a really tight fit then. That is um, with the black elastic in there, that's the large method feeder. I've got a four inch hook length, size 12 QM1 hook, and I've put a little speed stop on the end there. And that is so I can obviously just poke it through one of those little durables. The important thing when you do your little hair is to make sure that the bait sort of just hanging only just below the bend of the hook it's not too far away from the hook that you, you know, you're going to miss out on those smaller fish but obviously there's some freedom there as well so there you go a really standard method feeder setup and with this gear hopefully i'll be catching fish under arm in it or maybe even down the middle today so folks let's talk about my plan for today i'm going to have two swims to start with the first one is an underarm swim got a lovely little margin down the edge there five, six meters out, something like that. Loads of fish get caught short here at Larford. And on that swim, I'm gonna feed it. I'm gonna feed it balls of ground bait, just plop a ball of ground bait in every now and again. As the day goes on, as I wanna try and push the swim, I'll obviously feed those, that, I'll feed those balls a little bit more regular. Incidentally, those balls are almost exactly the same size as the feeder that I'm chucking in. That's so those fish get used to coming into those little balls of ground bait, feeding on them, it's quite a safe, you know, to the fish it feels quite safe. So with those little balls of ground bait, I'll just be plopping them in down the edge, you know, in a rough area. I'm looking to hit an area sort of the size of maybe a dinner table. Then I'm gonna plop my little feeder over the top. That is gonna be my first chuck. So I've fed a ball of ground bait down there. Hopefully that's just enough to alert a couple of fish into the area. And then I'm going to sort of underarm my feeder into that area. It's quite often you can catch some really big fish really early in the session, quite close in, before you need to go and sort of explore the rest of the explore the rest of the swim. So, first chuck, close in, let it fall down on a nice tight line. As I mentioned earlier, these reels have got that sort of quick drag, so I'm just uh, going to use that. So if a fish does decide to to bolt out into the middle of the lake, we're sort of covered there. Right, next plan of attack, if this area of the swim dies, is gonna be a line at sort of like 25, 30 meters. That area where people come here, they feed eight mil pellets. They usually catch on a balm or pellet waggler or method feeder, but they're feeding bait there all the time. Those eight mil pellets, that's about the distance though they go when, they, when they're catapulted out. Now, if I'm struggling, I might have to break out some eight mil pellets off a sub bench, some fishery pellets, Take the forfeit, add an extra five pounds to the target weight, but that's if I'm struggling. I'm hoping that just that area of the lake is a natural sort of fish holding spot that I can just plop, plop my method feeder in there and catch a few fish. To be fair though, that'll just be a ticking over area of the lake. You know, tick over there until this margin kicks in again later on this afternoon. And I'm really expecting this area of my peg down the side there to be the best area of my swim. While that's out there, let me talk to you about how I've loaded the feeder because loading the method is quite important. I've got my little hook bait on there, one of those little durables, six mil durable. Obviously, 
is really nice in in the method feeder because you no matter how hard you sort of squeeze the ball you're not going to break the pellet up right first layer of ground bait as you see i'm not using a mold because i really want to compact the ground bait on i want to push it into all those little bars so maybe a little bit different to when you're using pellets this is but for ground bait i like to create a really nice rock hard sort of base and that means that no, matter, no matter what happens, no matter how many little fish come and peck around my method, no matter how much of this ground bait, because ground bait's quite light in the water, big fish comes in, it can waft that ground bait away. So no matter how much a fish down there wafts or how much movement there is down there, there's always still going to be a little bit of ground bait really close to my hook bait. Then, just with my thumb, just pinch the hook bait right on top, bang in the middle of the ball. And then this top layer, I just... A little bit careful how I put it on. You can still push it on quite hard, but you don't want it to be rock hard. You just want it, you want to put that on so you know it's going to break down. You don't want it to break down on impact with the water surface, but you want it to break down as soon as it starts, as soon as it reaches the bottom, you want it to start breaking down. So there you go, finished ball. It's not massive, it's not I've not mounted that up like a coconut. You just want the perfect amount of bait. There's enough attraction there to attract a fish into the area. What you're looking to do is just put the perfect amount of bait on there so that the fish has one or two mouthfuls and it's always got your hook bait in that mouthful. You don't want a big coconut on there so a fish has to maybe work at it too hard to get your hook bait. That there is the perfect size, the perfect parcel for, let's hope, a double figure fish. So then folks, we've had a nice little start to be fair, not a, any big fish, but we've had some skimmers, little tiny carp, probably the smallest carp in Larford, just under arm and a feeder under this bush to our right hand side, and slowed, it slowed down a little bit. So I cast onto that line I was talking about, sort of like 25 metres out. I'd seen a little bit of bubbling there earlier, just as we were setting up. So. I think that's a really good line on a lot of these open water lakes where people are constantly firing eight mil pellets out on a pellet waggler line. And the fish usually sort of like hang around those areas. And second chuck on that line, we've hooked a better fish. And this is definitely a carp. I'm not gonna say it's double figures because I don't think it's quite that big, but it's just gone on a run about 20 meters to my left he's got a bit of a nod about him that says he's quite a big fish this guy i don't want him to go under this tree i mean some cracking fish in here I mean, a couple of weeks ago well a bit longer than a couple of weeks ago maybe three or four weeks ago now i was next to a chap and he had one 27 pound just doing a similar sort of thing as we're doing today short range method feeder work the crafty fish as well, we've seen it all before. They're not young fish, they're old fish these. So they've seen it all before. So maybe using ground bait today instead of micro pellets. I mean, everyone uses micro pellets here. Using ground bait might fool a few of them. I always like to take my time with the first fish. First decent fish you hook. Tell you what, Marky boy. 
<laughs> I think he might be double figures, what do you think? What do we think? I think we're getting the scales, don't you? This is a beautiful fish, beautiful common. I'll tell you what, we'll get him on the mat, put him on the scale, see how big he is. I'm guessing 12 pound, that might be challenge done within an hour. And then I can get home, put my feet up and we're done. Let's get him on the scales. So there we go folks, I'm not going to lift him too high, just under 14 pound, cracking common, beautiful fish, chuffed to bits with that, pretty good start I'd say, I've had a few skimmers already and then the tip's obviously gone round with this beauty, so we'll whack him back and I'm going to have another chuck. So we've just put that cracking common back. First chalk back, and we've got another carp. Obviously, you have to those first few skimmers. It's a carp chuck now. And I think we might have hit on something here with the, the ground bait. I mean, the old pink bag doesn't get an airing very often, but it's a pretty reliable mix. I wouldn't fancy hooking one on a pole. I think you'd run out of elastic pretty quick. It's not quite as big as that last last fish, I don't think. This looks like a, a big old mirror, this one. Let's have a look. Just seen it's dark back a second ago. Another cracking fish, mirror, type, mirror this time. And he's not quite well, no, he's not quite as big as the last one, but definitely one for the scales. Let's see if we've got two fish in two chucks that's completed the challenge. Let's get this guy up there on the scales. So there you go, we've just put one back at just under 14 pound, that common was fantastic. Very next chuck, we catch this fella, a proper warrior, 12 pound 10. Same tactics, those durables as hook bait, the swim stim method mix as feed, and I would say that is challenge completed.